Felicitations! It is me, Felicia Day, and this is my podcast. Welcome, you guys. It's been a little bit. I don't know if time really exists anymore, so at some, in some portion of time, we haven't been talking, and now we are talking. I don't even know. I don't even know how many weeks it's been. I think it's been two, but it could have been three, and I'm, I would totally buy that. This week has been really exciting. I want to give a shout out to um, the movie that I was in, Puka Lives. Puka Lives. I need to get one of those puh things for my mic. I'm so sorry about that. Pop in my peas. Um, Puka Lives. It is a horror comedy film that I was in. I'm one of the stars of, and it was it's on Hulu currently. So it's an Into the Dark, which is one of the Hulu uh, anthology Blumhouse series. So Blumhouse, the place, you know, who made... Uh, uh, get Out and all these great low budget horror films. All of them are wonderful. Um, and this one is no the, no different. My friends Jonah Ray and Malcolm Barrett, um, Lindy Greenwood, Gavin Stenhouse, my friend Will Wheaton and Rachel Bloom are in the aren't it? So uh, I got all my friends together to get into a movie. You guys watch it. It's not very scary. I will tell you that. It's not a nail botter. I wouldn't show it to a kid, but it is not very. It's like gremlin scary. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little bit scarier than Gremlins. I just watched Gremlins for, I, I guessed it on another podcast where you have to talk about one of your favorite movies as a kid. And that thing was, that movie holds up, but it is not what I remembered at five or six years old. So we'll, we'll whatever, save it. I'll save it for that podcast. Anyway, um, it's been a while and I want to give a shout out to all the parents out there. Actually, this podcast is devoted to Kimberly, who got a cameo from me randomly. And then we started chatting and... We were just talking about how hard it is. She's a single mom with a five-year-old. I have a three-year-old. I'm not um, alone here like her. So uh, I, I'm lucky in having a little bit of help. But it is hard. And I didn't really know what I was getting into when I became a parent. And it, ha as you guys have learned when i listening to this podcast, I have struggled quite a bit learning how to be a mom. Not just the logistics of it, but just learning how to be a mom and not be what I was before as much. And that is a real struggle. It continues to be a struggle. Although now that the world is shut down, I'm actually managing pretty well. <laughs> I was built for a quarantine, y'all. All right. I already work from home. I choose to do things my way. I literally could, I realize now that I could live in a mountain and just grow my own food and I'd be okay with it. I like to FaceTime like once a week with people. But honestly, the first several days of quarantine, people were just like crawling out my butthole. Hey friend, what's up? To haven't spoken to you in two years. What's up now? I'm like, really? Now is the time you want to to just fill your boredom with me? I'm not in the mood right now. I haven't talked to you for a reason. And then you do the sort of prerequisite like, hey, what's been going on? What are you doing? This is crazy, huh? All right, bye. And then you don't hear from them another two years. That was 30 minutes of my life I just, I don't need to even get into. Was I just ranting? I was just ranting while I was on a stand-up stage. I apologize. Anyway, it's just my pet peeve. Like, it's like the people I only heard from when they pop up in during Comic-Con when I was throwing parties. Hey, friend, how you doing? By the way, can I get plus 15 to this party? Like, no, you can't, all right? And then I'll give it to him, and then I'll get angry because they'll just walk right by me and not even say anything at the party. This is, like, not common. I'm just ranting in general. I like hearing from people. Like, a couple of people genuinely, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I love, I really miss you. And I think... I will give parents more slack and also I'll give single people a slack because once you become a parent, there's that sort of parent single person divide that just, it's like a wall guys. It really is because you're not interested in kids when you're single. You just aren't. I ghosted all my friends when I was single, uh, when they had a kid. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm learning a lot about myself in isolation. <laughs> anyway, it's really, really hard. And what I observ observed they're, they're, the ha they're the single people during quarantine, and then there's the parents during quarantine. And single people are, like, doing it all. They're w playing all the video games. they like, I finished Final Fantasy VII, and they re-released Persona, and, I uh, you know, Animal Crossing. I got the best, you know, island ever. Like, and, and I binged, you know, 17 shows. I'm bored now. Then there's parents who are like, just give me an hour. Give me one single hour to myself. You went to sleep at 9.30 p.m. I don't have the energy. I have to clean the toilets. There's no, It's so filthy in this house. There's so many crumbs everywhere. I'm going to sweep things into a tiny little bucket and then I'm going to drink too much wine and sleep in agony. That's what happens. 
Listen, I love my baby more than anything in the world. I would give anything, I would give even more up for her in, in, in the heartbeat, all right? But 24 hours, seven, 24 seven is, it's a lot. And I'm a person who loves my work. And so, uh, you know, luckily I do have some help, but honestly, many days I don't. And like all day, every day is very, very tough. And it also makes me feel guilty because I'm like, well, this is your baby. One day she's not going to want to be around you all this much. So then I got guilt on top of boredom, on top of being irritated, on top of just trying to be an awesome person because she loves me. Ugh, it's bad. Single people are rolling their eyes right now. But honestly, if you love somebody who has a kid, send them some Postmates right now, all right? You'll make their day. Uh, but, but, okay, oh, but, but, I've become an amazing chef, you guys, okay? I have made, and it's all the Instant Pot, not, I have no referral link down here, but I've made some amazing stuff with my Instant Pot. I ordered, um, I think her name is Melissa Blake. She, one of the, one of the cookbooks I already had was like comfort in an instant. And then I ordered their dinner, dinner in the instant. And so I have two and I, and I just, this week I was like, okay, I'm bored. I'm bored with what you know how to do, which is like four things, Felicia. And we need to just branch it out. So I got a little bit fancy and I went to the store. I was like masked up. I had like gloves on. I went to the farmer's market, which was actually nobody was there. It was not very crowded. So that was very nice. And I just like loaded up. So. This week, uh, and I posted a picture on my Instagram, beef bourguignon I made, which was unbelievable. Guys, I, I, I don't even like onions or beef. And like the gravy in this thing, I don't know what happened. I used a bottle of wine. I don't really drink wine. So I opened a red bottle of wine because it required two cups of wine and I needed wine. And I was like, oh, I'll just drink some. I drink so much wine. I finished that bottle off, okay? And I didn't have a hangover or anything the next day. I don't know what's going on because I never could drink wine before, but this is a nice turn of events. (laughs) But the beef, like the gravy in the beef in the Instant Pot, it took a long time to make because there was a lot of prep. Um, You know, I had to get a lot of ingredients. It It wasn't cheap to get a whole chuck roast, but it was like two nights worth of food for three people. That's like pretty good. Like that's more than just one... One day of takeout would have been like four, three times. So I felt like thrifty, but also there was so much beef in there. I was full of beef and then I just couldn't stop eating. And then I put it over mashed potatoes. It was just so like falling apart tender and the gravy, you guys, I could literally lap it up. I'm not kidding. So that was my coup d'etat or my piece de resistance. Sorry for my weird French. Then I made a mung bean stew. You guys know about my mung beans. I love my mung bean curry recipe, but I tried a different one. It had potatoes and Swiss chard in it. Delicious. That thing, I could eat that for lunch every day. There's nothing better than mung bean because it just fills you up and you don't fart. I, I, I can't, okay, I can't testify that you're not going to fart with the mung beans. You might. Your body might be like, you know, but for me, compared to lentils, oh my God, you, I can't be in this house with lentils. Just very honestly. Okay, so I did that. That was a couple days worth of food. Delicious. I put it over a little rice. Delicious. Even Kalipi ate it, except I had to fish out the Swiss chard because anything green besides broccoli is just like completely poison to her. Then I made, okay, here's what I will blow your mind with, y'all. I I know I'm just going on about this, but I'm just, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm lonely. (laughs) I'm lonely. I'm lonely and I want to talk to people. So I'm going to talk into a mic by myself and give it to you guys. That's communication in this world now. So here is what's going to blow your mind. I took a whole chicken frozen. I made sure there was no giblets or anything in there, but the, the one I brought had nothing inside. I took a whole frozen chicken, put it under a little warm water, got the plastic off, put it on the rack in the Instant Pot with over one cup of water, and the bottom. So it's not touching the water. It's on the rack. I poured three tablespoons of butter mixed with a lot of poultry seasoning all over that chicken. This took three and a half minutes. Then I cooked that thing for 50 minutes. Do you know what I got? I got a perfectly done chicken in 50 minutes from frozen, completely frozen solid. I put it under the broiler to get the skin crispy for 10 minutes. 
So it took about, you know, it, it, it takes about 20 minutes to warm up. Okay, so it was probably one, one hour and 15 minutes all in. But this is three minutes. I walk away with a frozen chicken. I have a chicken. Then I took the bones and I made some broth with which I made mung beans too. So like it was the cycle of delight. And I just want to tell you, there's no better, nothing better than this pressure cooker. I really should be a saleswoman. This is, if, <laughs> if when everything opens up again, my Hollywood career is over, you know what I'm going to be selling? Not Avon. I will be selling Instant Pots. Okay, last thing I want to talk about. Tonight, um, I made chicken coconut curry in the Instant Pot. Of course, I can't use a stove. It was so delicious, you guys. I went out and got a special spice called garam masala. I don't know. It was so delicious. I had coriander pods and a, uh, a cinnamon stick in there and some coconut oil and ghee. I like went all out and I'm like, I'm going to make this every night. I had chicken thighs. It was so delicious. So I feel so self-sufficient and I can blow two, three hours a day cooking now. I've made about 12 batches of brownies in the last two weeks, several dozen cupcakes, an apple cake. Um, oh boy, cookies out the wazoo. I don't even know. I want to try some rice pudding this weekend. It's Easter, you know, why not? <sighs> I'm so bored. No, I'm not bored at all. I'm actually having the time of my life. I was, uh, I was thinking the other day, like my anxiety level is at the lowest possible. I mean, I am the Lexapro guys. I am, I notice a huge, tremendous difference um, in my behavior. I actually might want to like cut back on the dose because um, I'm feeling not very motivated or uh, I'm not feeling very cr as creative um, urgency as I did before, but that could just be right now. So I'm just like coasting and I do still do all my meditation tapes and I do, you know, I try, I'm not on, I mean, caffeine and I try to avoid sugar except for the 12,000. I am drinking. Oh, okay. I'll be honest. I'm just eating sugar ever, everywhere, but it's okay. It's okay. So it's really made a big difference in my life and I'm very thankful for it because I think under other circumstances, this would be extremely stressful because I'm sure you guys are experiencing the same thing. We have not only uncertainly in the world, um, the stock market is like insane and so if you had any like, you know, I have a little savings account for Calliope for her college, forget it. <laughs> um, you're going to public school. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with public school. I went to public school. So there you go. And, um, you know, um, um, all the jobs are gone. And I know I, I particularly, my heart goes out to restaurant workers who I know are being extremely harmed and there's no safety net for them in this world and to comic book and uh, gaming shops. I mean, I wish there was a charity that I could directly help those people. Um, we're actually doing a charity stream. I guess I'll, I'll announce it right now. Um, we're going to be doing a charity stream next Thursday, April 16th, from 7 to 10 p.m. on my Twitch channel. Uh, the guild is getting together to play D&D. &D. So uh, we're going to be playing our characters in a fantasy world. And we'll see how it goes. Some of us haven't played, some of them haven't played D&D, &D, but um, Amy Vorpal is going to be DMing, and I'm so excited about it. We're going to be raising money for No Hungry, No Kid Hungry, which is a nonprofit organization that is helping kids who basically relied on schools to feed them, and now they don't have food. And this is actually a reality in this country. I think, you know, the fascinating thing is that we're seeing is that a third of people couldn't cover their mortgage last month or their rent. Um, kids are not eating, and we're, in, we're supposedly in the richest, most um, wonderful country in the world, and we're not taking care of our most vulnerable people. There's no safety net for just even a three-week delay. It really is exposing a lot of, uh, I think, flaws in our system. You know, I think a lot of uh, backlash against celebrities right now, I've seen it because basically you have these people who have everything in the world and they're kind of like, you know, they're not really in touch with people who actually are suffering. And then when you see them share things on social media, you're like, um, are you kidding me? To them, they are suffering, but like that means that that kind of shows you that they don't really understand how people, uh, everyday people live. And so, anyway, I hope that it encourages people to sort of um, prioritize like helping each other, which I think has come out a lot in this experiment, you know, experience. Um, actually, you know what I, I thought the other day? I thought that, you know, for a while, when I first started making web content um, into like, you know, 2008 or whatever, so 2007. I believed in my heart about the positive impact of the internet. I really did. And I, am, I believed about 
the the culture of geek and nerd um Greek and nerd culture. I believe in it because I believe that it brings out the best in people and it can um, create a safety net, a social safety net and a social connection in a way that you can't even do offline. And that always was my premise of, you know, my book, if you read it. Um, And then the dark side of the internet came out around 2014 and 15. And, you know, and it sort of grew into the election and so there was this sort of like zeitgeist of like the internet is a terrible and awful place where people now are being bullied and harassed and all these really terrible things happened to a lot of people and so the wonderful thing I'm seeing is that that has gone the complete opposite direction with all these things all the stuff that's happened seeing people giving free classes to kids um, you know being entrepreneurial in sharing their uh, talents and their advice to people, uh, connecting as a community, one-on-one with people that they, people don't know, but also just using the internet to connect with people they love or the people they've lost touch with. Sorry for insulting those people who are texting me earlier. (laughs) But it actually is bringing back the zeitgeist of the internet that I believe in and I love that, you know, you can create community and um, encourage people to accept who they are and be themselves online in a way that actually is better than offline. So um, it's wonderful. And as somebody who's done live streaming, I mean, you guys, when Geek and Sundry launched, um, I was one of the first people to ever use Google Hangouts. And I had a whole slate of Google Hangout shows with my Vaginal Fantasy show um, where I had four hosts streaming live uh, for an hour once a month talking about books. And then we had a whole slate of shows. And then it wasn't supported because I guess that wasn't a good experiment for Google. But now the potential of that platform is totally flourishing. And I think it's wonderful. I've had to teach live streaming to a lot of people. Like I literally have talked to people who are like, I've never talked on a camera before. And I'm like, oh my God, really? But I think it's wonderful. And a lot of creativity is coming out. I've been streaming so much more. I love it so much. I love my community. If you guys aren't at discord.gg slash Felicia Day, come on over. There's a COVID-19 channel. <laughs> if you if you want to like stay up to date on what's going on there and then talk about board games in the board game channel, just come on over. Um, I really think that people are connecting in a way and feeling not quite as alone. I know people are getting together and playing games together um, from the Discord. So it's a really awesome place. And I've been streaming Stardew Valley. My friend Amy Okuda from the Guild streamed with me this week and she's going to do another one this Sunday night with me. Um, So, and my brother's coming on and I've been playing with my mods who are wonderful people all around. And so it's just really... I have to say that my soul is soaring because I am recapturing a little bit of what the internet meant to me and also my career meant to me. I felt a little bit out of touch with that. I'm sure you guys know listening to the podcast that Hollywood has really given me a a run for my money the last couple of uh, years. And I've tried so hard to um, do what I love. And yet, you know, I've started shrinking as a creator and seeing that, um, there are ways for me to get my creativity out there, no matter what the level, um, is very exciting to me. So I've, uh, I'm diving back into a writing project I had. I have a couple more lined up. They're all on my own. So I'll have to get, um, you know, out there back in Hollywood and auditioning and, you know, pitching things again, um, just for my career's sake and, you know, the baby's sake. But at the same time, I've renewed, I have a renewed sense of self in a way that I haven't had in a long time. And I think it took unplugging for a while from Hollywood to get me that. So I'm kind of excited to go back. I'll even do my hair, (laughs) y'all. Anyway, so that's kind of what's been going on. I mean, just, uh, it's lovely just spending time with friends, like just FaceTiming with a friend who lives in another part of Los Angeles, just to say, hi, I'm like, we would never have done this before. Uh, why don't we do this more often? So it's great. Um, so last week, uh, just to round, round it up. So last week, um, I was uh, I was really happy to uh, have the Puka Lives c- come out. It really is something I'm super proud of. And my friend Ryan Koppel, who wrote the script, wrote the part for me. Molly is such a wonderful character. Being able to act with my friends, you know, Rachel Bloom and Will Wheaton came in and did cameos. And my friend Jonah Ray plays my husband. And we just have such good chemistry Um, We just really enjoy each other. You know, MST3K, we didn't get to work face-to-face as much. And this really was like, oh, wow, dude, I love talking to you. I love texting. I text the other um, people in the cast all the time. And so it just really created a family um, akin to, like, the other projects. I was in the middle of an acting project that got cut off because of the quarantine. But I'm hopefully going back to that and finishing it soon enough because, um, you know, I love that. That's why I work. I don't work to just, you know 
be on camera. Um, I like to be on set with people who are loving what they love, uh, do, and uh, loving the other people that they're doing it with. So anyway, um, as far as consuming things, I've just been addicted to Stardew Valley. If you're not familiar with Stardew Valley, it's the most perfect game in existence. You uh, play a farmer, you plant crops, you can fish, you can go mining, you can romance and marry people in the game. It's uh, pretty much the perfect game. And you can play multiplayer with your friends. It's not cross-platform, so you have to be on the PC or Mac to be able to do that multiplayer, I think. I'm not sure if they have multiplayer on Switch. I don't know. But um, I play on the computer, and it's so fun. It's just so fun. I've been having the mods come in, and like I said, Amy and the mods, and they're just... Being able to game with each other is just like, wow, I love this. I'm not becoming a WoW addict again, although I would play every night if I allow myself to, but I'm not. I play a couple times a week and I stream it and it's like really social. It makes me feel much less lonely to have all the awesome people I know in my chat. So that's a thing. And so as far as TV shows, I really haven't watched very many. I really want to get The Mandalorian under my belt because I just feel like I'm not even caught up on nerd culture because I haven't watched The Mandalorian. I want to watch The Expanse. So those are the two next things I really want to binge. And I'm determined to make room for it. Um, I, I have just I just have so many cool side projects I'm doing with friends and podcast interviews and I'm guesting on people's live streams to raise charity money and I'm doing this guild thing. It's just, uh, it feels like I have a creative spark that I haven't had in a while. Um, and it really, it really is fun. I did read one book though. Okay, I did finally read The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, and I have to tell you guys, it is brilliant. I, um, I don't, you you guys know I read like a book every two days, right? Usually. And if I'm in my groove, and this is, this was an unusually large book. I kind of, I don't think I've gotten lost in a book quite like this since Dr. Strange and Mr. Norrell, Norrell. I love that book so much. I didn't like the miniseries quite as much. It wasn't nearly as good, to, to be honest with you. But um, that book just riveted. It just every... And this kind of book, Erin Morgan, she wrote The Night Circus as well, which is also an incredible book. Just the way she writes, I want to drink up all the words. I have to, you know, usually in order to read a book in two days, you have to skim it, right? I don't... I can't skim her prose. It's just too beautiful. It, it's half poetry, half song lyrics, half writing. You know, and the world building is so fascinating and it really is a wonderful kind of mystery, fantasy. Um, you know, have, uh, there's also another uh, Dr. Penumbra's bookstore. I think that was a book. The, is that the, is that the, let, wait, just a second. Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. That's the, that's the book. That's what it's called. That one also was a very magical book that I loved. I wonder if that author has, I'm sure that author has written something again, but I haven't read anything by them. Oh, this is something I must rectify. So, there are certain books that have that sort of like magic that, you know, like The Magicians. Um, there, it's, it's taking place in modern day, but it has that sort of uh, fantasy, uh, lush sort of writing. And this, you know, this is it. Cat, uh, Cat, Catherine v- v- Valenti also has this sort of prose. I love her books. They're um, incredible. So this book, I just had to savor it, guys. And I, you know, I didn't have a ton of time. Ba- uh, the baby goes to sleep at like 9 30 p.m and the only thing I could do after that is just clean the crumbs up from everywhere because I'm become like an OCD freak about crumbs and dirt in my house so like my probably an hour a day I have like a squirt bottle in my hands I'm not even kidding so I just clean the house I, I set everything right because if you just let the chaos take over it just is an infection so anyway um so I, I had like 30 minutes to read every night and I just took my time it's kind of like what we can all do now. Just take time to do things right without rushing. And it's so gratifying. I know that I will never maybe get as far if I work at this pace for the rest of my life, but I could be happier. And then what's the difference? What, like, what's the point of rushing if you're not enjoying yourself? If you're uh, you know, running through something without savoring it? What is the point of just even experiencing it? You know, I, I noticed that sort of attitude where it's like, I'll take a picture of that and I'll post it on Instagram. Did I absorb it? No. Am I just doing it for the sake of other people to react to? Or is it about me as a person? Like, this is something I talk about in my book, Embrace Your Weird, a lot. Um, allowing yourself to absorb the experiences and uh, have them accumulate in you without rushing through and sort of, you know, it's like losing a bunch of the information, like retaining 10%. Uh, you do it... faster, but you only retain 10%. Like that's not living. That's not creating a template for somebody at the end of their life that knows a lot of stuff 
or has a lot of passions or really savored their life. So I can't say that I can move at this pace. Like for real, I can't create bur- bu- beef bourguignon every day. It took two and a half hours over two and a half hours, but I can once a week decide to live as slow as this. And that's kind of going to be my goal. Like on Sundays, it needs to be this slow. And maybe I could do Saturday and Sunday sometimes. Um, so anyway, with all the stress of what's going to happen in the future and all the stress of what's been happening right now, like we can only grab the positive things that are happening to us. And if that's just connecting with people we love and learning how to live slower, I think I think that's a good thing. Okay, question time. I promise I will consume more next week. Maybe not. Questions. Bisbee Moo Moo asks, who was the big, single biggest influence when you started your podcast? Oh, okay. Um, you know, I, I was urged to do podcasts for a long time. And I didn't just want to interview people. Although, you know, it would be nice to interview people, which dovetails into Stephanie Fire's, Fire, Stephanie's question. Hi, Felicia. I've listened to your podcast vlogs for years, and I think you're delightful. I wanted to ask you why your ba- podcast is still coined beta. There's so many episodes, and they're just great. Just curious. So, Stephanie, I call it a beta because I started this podcast just to start it. Because people were like, well, you don't have a subject. Just start one. And so I didn't have... I was kind of at a very low point when I took that advice. I was just, it was either right before I had a baby or right after. And I just didn't have the, the strength to think of a fun concept. So I was like, well, and then I stumbled on Bill Burr, one of these, um, he's a very complainy com- com- comedian. And I don't in- necessarily enjoy everything about his point of view, but he did a, uh, he did a monologue podcast kind of like this. So he just talks. He just talks and talks and talks by himself. And I was like, is there anybody? So I found that because I was like, is there anybody just doing a one-person podcast so I could just not deal with all the hassle of having guests and inviting them over and editing it and getting a producer? And I just kind of wanted to be free and nimble for a while. It was it was t- during a time I was shedding things and I didn't want to take on things. And I probably would have been better off business-wise by just doing an interview show, but that's okay. Uh, so that was, that was my b- biggest influence, just giving me the encouragement to just start. Uh, the fact that Bill Burr just kind of rants into his mic, I guess, once a week. Um, and it, as far as Stephanie's question about the podcast, it's beta because I do, I do genuinely think it would be fun now in my life. I, I guess I was finding my sea legs and wondering if a, a more structure for this podcast might be make it more popular, um, and also just have more fun. I'm under construction right now and I'm going to change my, you know, back office into a little bit of a, more of a studio that I can stream more professionally and maybe do more professional podcasts. I don't know. I, I'm just going to set it up like that. I don't want to pressure myself in any way because I'm trying to lead myself in life through joy a little bit more because I think that my brain has driven me in a lot of ways that aren't really organically connected to my heart. And the things that I've loved in this world, like doing the guild, like, you know, some of Geek and Sundry, like I could see the highlights of it. And they're always about following my joy, wanting to share that joy with other people and doing things with people I love to get things out there. Those are the three universals in anything that I've made. And they were inevitably popular, not because, um, uh, you know, that I was like, oh my gosh, I see an audience there. We're going to exploit that audience. It's because I just have a genuine enthusiasm. I want people to know about this. That basic, that is basically my point of view in life. And I let myself get away from that a little bit um, in trying to please other people and fit into the Hollywood system. And honestly, I know that there's a place for me in Hollywood. I just have to be more firm in who I am and put it, putting it forth. And I think that's where I've come full circle from like, you know, doing my own thing only, trying to get into Hollywood and sort of like maybe compromising too much, not wanting to do Hollywood at all. And now I'm like, okay, you know what? Just try to do the things you actually want to do. And if you can't get them made, that's fine. They didn't want that. Try something else, but you don't have to think you're a bad person or what you want to make is bad because they don't want it. That's, I guess, where I was getting mixed up in my brain. Um, We have to have faith in ourselves and our voice or we lose that voice. And that's why I think Embrace Your Weird was sort of a search when I wrote it I wanted that for other people, but I think underneath, I most wanted it for myself. I want it for everybody. I want us all to know ourselves. I want us all to feel like we have something in our life that gets our voice out into the world in a way that we bring joy um, to ourselves and the people around us. So, you know, now is the time to, go, to do a, a good a good time to do my book. Embrace your weird, you guys. It's uh, It definitely takes a lot of time, but hey, we got time right now, right? Anyway, Stephanie, so it still has beta in that I don't know, um, you know, if I end up doing a, a bigger podcast, I don't know if I'll change the name 
or relaunch it completely under another name. I guess this is just the beta of me in this venue. Um, I have other ideas, but right now I'm just, um, I just don't want the pressure. I think I crumpled under pressure for a while and now I'm kind of back and I feel like I'm a little more Teflon, but um, yeah, so maybe I'll take the beta off, but I think I need to have a plan because I like to present you guys things that are nicely well put together. And this is, this is fine. <laughs> um, Elona Andrews blog feed asks, will there be a sequel to Embrace Your Weird? That is a really good question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so I don't have a nonfiction book that I'm thinking about writing right now. Um, the magic, the, the writing projects I'm working on, one I'm very excited about, I'm doing rewrites on. It's the one I've been working on for, oh gosh, probably eight months, nine months now. I'm finally getting back into kind of a final re rewrite. Um, and so I'm excited about that. I really want to do a novel. I have a couple of ideas in my head, but I haven't committed to. I need to do proposals for them. I have a kid's book that I'm thinking about doing. Um, again, I need to do a proposal. So that's kind of my homework. Um, I, I do want to do another book. I love writing books. I have a comic idea I want to do. I have a stage play thing I want to do. So I have a lot of ideas. Once I kind of unplug from, I need to do a Hollywood project, I've had so many creative projects I want to do. And so it's just a question about time management. And I don't know how about you guys. If you have kids, you know that there's just no time. There's no energy at the end of the day. Like I'm doing this at 9 p.m. after the baby's asleep. I, I needed to be doing writing and I'm just like, I don't have the mental capacity to write right now. Let's just talk to some friends, <laughs> which is basically me. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's about, and I think if you just do one thing at a time, um, I'll get there. So I'm just focusing on one thing at a time. Definitely the long term is to write a novel. So it's not really a sequel to Embrace Your Weird, but it is something It'll be a follow-up because that was kind of my bucket list item. If you read the book, there was like, you kind of go through the process and then you settle on one project and then you really enable yourself to do that project. That is a novel. So anyway, not there yet, but hopefully next year. Anyway, uh, Richard Gagnon, you always give us me the best questions. And if you guys want to ask me a question, please ask me anything. Um, just put hashtag felicitations on your tweet and Sean Sandy Looky Look will fish it out of the Twitter sphere and throw it into this uh, spreadsheet that he so lovely, lovingly upkeeps. Thank you, Sean. So this is a good question, though. If you were magically transported back in time to classical Greek period, would your 21st century knowledge give you an advantage to excel? Twain's Connecticut Yankee had an advantage of being a foreman at the arms factory in less advanced tech society than today. Okay, these are very good questions. So I think about this a lot because time travel is so enticing, right? Like Quantum Leap. Scott Bakula was my childhood crush, okay? Quantum Leap should be remade. I have no idea why it's not being remade. Um, and so the thing about it is that the minute I landed there, I would die of smallpox. I would die of like 15,000 diseases that I do not have um, immunity against because if you... If you, I, I've been reading a lot about the Black Plague. I talked about that last time. But just in general, you know, people lived next to livestock. You know, people, um, it, it was dirty. You know, it was really, really dirty. And I think during the medieval times, I would definitely die about a lot faster. But back in Greek period, I'm sure there were things there I just don't have immunity to. And my body would just like fall over. I do have some vaccines, but I don't have a smallpox vaccine. I don't think they give those anymore. So I don't know. Okay, barring that. I, boy, do I have my Instant Pot? <laughs> okay, this is another question that I don't think I have very many skills, you guys. Like, if there was an apocalypse, does anybody need anything I do? I know how to do? Not really. I mean, I can cook okay, but I would have to use the, I, I there's nothing I would do that a cook back then wouldn't do better, right? So, um... I mean, if I had like a, um, if I had like a case full of spices with me, maybe that would dazzle some people, but then that would, you know, like a magic, it would be like, Ooh, what is, what is cinnamon? I don't know if they had cinnamon back then or what, but, um, what is this thing? So they would be super impressed with that, but then they want more. And then when I couldn't produce it, they'd kill me because they torture it out of me. Like, where did you get it? Um, so that's, I'm really not, <laughs> I'm really not selling this as a positive thing. Okay. So I, I do know things about medicine. So I think I could tell them about germs because they literally didn't know about germs. Like that's what's fascinating about the Black Plague. Like they, did, they literally didn't know why people got sick. They thought it was like gas and humors. So I could tell people about how the body works a little bit, but nobody would be, believe me. They'd think me, I was a witch and I, I'm a woman. So nobody would listen to a woman. So that, those two things would not be um, well, well taken. I have, 
I don't know. I, I mean, I would probably be enslaved very quickly, right? Because that was pretty common back then. And I have no provenance and I wouldn't be able to speak the language. So I would just become a slave of somebody. I would probably be impregnated against my will and die <laughs> in childbirth. <laughs> oh my God, this is, I'm selling, I'm not selling time travel. Okay, listen, let's, be, okay, best case scenario, what do I have to offer the ancient Greeks? Well, I can dance pretty well. <laughs> I can dance pretty well and I can play the violin. And so I don't know if that would translate. If I could maybe get someone to build me a violin, that's how I would probably make my living because they would be impressed with that if I could somehow have a violin. So if I time travel, all I know is I need my violin because I think people would be like, oh, she's pretty good. Let's, um, let's get her to do this thing. Like somebody would be like, oh, I'll have her in my court, right? Oh, this is really a long answer. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up because I've been wandering around a lot today. <laughs> well, you guys, I want to give a shout out to all the people out there with kids or without who are feeling lonely. Um, I know this is a really hard time. And if you have mental health issues, um, who knows how we're all reacting. I think we're all reacting in different ways. The stress is getting to a lot of my friends in a, in a very negative way. And they're having issues, you know, they're really having issues. They're having to seek help because the confinement is really hard for them. And the stress of having their job disappear is really hard. Um, like I said, um, however you can support your local businesses, try to do that. If you have a comic book, if you have any comic pulls, like call them and be like, I still want these. I, I still will pay for them. I want them. If you have a local game shop, you know, call them up. Don't order from Amazon. Just call them and say, hey, can I pick it up outside? I'll pay for my credit card and I'll pick it up at 2.30, leave it on the doorstep. Like these are ways that we can help each other because at the end of the day, we don't want just big companies to survive all this, right? We, we the, the wonderful thing about this country is that we can start from nothing and become whatever we want. And uh, to, to take a whole generation of entrepreneurs and wipe them out because of this, it's not right. So uh, anyway, good luck to everybody. Um, stay safe. Do some crazy food experiments. Tell me on Twitter what you've been doing that's weird and send me a picture if it's really super complicated. I'm making gnocchi on Monday. I've decided I just want to learn how to make gnocchi because it just is like, how does that happen out of potatoes? I don't get it. It's a pasta, but it's not. Pot it's potatoes. I don't get it. So I'll be doing that next week and I'll take a picture for you. Okay, you guys. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. I'm, I'll see some of you on my live streams, twitch.tv slash Felicia Day next Thursday, August 16th. Come on over. It'll be fun. It'll be something. All right. Bye.